Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Cracks at Turning Problems into Solutions. This is me Priyasha Das and today we are up with the fourth episode of Blitz Brigade where we are taking the last part of number system. So as I said in my previous video, some of the questions might fall in some other categories also like they might fall in some other chapters also but primarily they are a part of number theory and therefore I have covered it under this heading but don't worry whatever questions I found important from this section I have picked it up so today I have seven questions to deal so I would be putting it forward to you people in this video hoping that you follow the same technique you pause the video look at the question give at least one minute to yourself to understand this question and then watch the solution. Also a very important point that whatever calculations are supposed to be done in these questions should be done by you using your pen and paper so that you are acquainted with that practicing or uh, you know calculating stuff and usse aapko dar na lage. So let's get started with the first question guys. The difference between certain two prime numbers is 2009. How many divisors does the sum of the two primes have? Now this question has two parts in it. First is a hundred percent common sense jo ki cat ke exam mein laga ke pucha jata hai trust me if you go and check every quant question of cat and zat you would realize that her question mein koi na koi common sensical baat chupi hoti hai so what is that common sensical thing over here if you just realize that the sum the difference between two prime numbers let's say x minus y is 2009 and the difference can be odd only when one of the prime numbers is even. Why am I saying so? You can try it out. 5 minus 3 gives you an even difference. Alright. But at the same time, 3 minus 2 gives you an odd difference. So you see this? You have to have an odd prime number and an even prime number so that the difference comes out to be odd. And we have only one prime number which is even. That is 2. So definitely one of the numbers is 2. So I have y ko 2 let you. Smaller number is 2. Now if the smaller number is 2 and the difference is 2009, then it's quite understood that x will be equals to 2011. Till this, I hope everyone understood the question. So ye thi common sensical baat is question ki. So I said that every question is a lesson, a learning. Hai. And this question's learning is this common sense thing only that the difference can be odd only when we have an even prime number. So that is only 2. So now when we got the other number which is 2011, I need the sum of the two primes and the sum of the two primes will be 2013. Now in 2013 if you carefully observe, I don't know how many of you know the divisibility rule of 3 but the divisibility rule of 3 says 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 3. That means you add up the digits of the number and if that number is a number divisible by 3 then the entire number is also divisible by 3. So please do the prime factorization of 2013 with me, okay? So I'll just quickly show you the prime factorization part. So this is 2013. I can divide it by 3, alright? I'll be getting how much over here? 6 3s are 18 and then 2, 1, 7. I can further break it down, okay? I can keep breaking it down till I reach a number which is satisfying like here no other number can divide this but except 11 because 11 6 are in 66 and then with a 1 here now 61 is a prime number isn't it so therefore i'll stop right away now prime factorization many q here because if i keep the powers like this i can find out the total divisor last video i have you total divisor ka formula bataya tha, p plus 1 into q plus 1 into r plus 1 if you all remember where p q r are the powers of the prime number so here the powers are 1 1 1 so it will be 2 into 2 into 2 which means 8 total divisors and if anyone wants to recheck this you can check this that the divisors will be 1 30 uh, 3 11 33 61 183 671 and the number itself 2013 okay so this is the way how you do the first question teen concepts lage isme first your common sense of two second your uh, 
you know sum of this part and then finding out the prime factorization of this number then finding out the total factor so three concepts let's go to the second question i hope that you will pause the screen try this question on your own and then resume to see the solution the hcf of two numbers is 43 and their sum is 430 total number of distinct pairs of such number of two such number is what now what do you understand by this that mujhe do numbers aise chahiye i need two numbers which have their hcf as 43 condition number one and condition number two if i add these two numbers up i should get the sum of 430 so for this circumstances what should be done guys the easiest thing is assume that the number is x and y and because their HCF is 43, so that means, what is the meaning of HCF, guys? We will work root se kaam karenge, you know, fundamentals clear karenge. So, upar upar se formula jaanne se kuch nahi hoga. Only knowing the formulas will only help you in one question. But knowing the fundamental concept will help you solve all the questions coming your way. What is the fundamental behind HCF? HCF is called as highest common factor. That means that number which divides both the numbers, right? The highest number that can do so. And therefore, if, I, if someone is saying that 43 is that highest number, why can't I multiply 43 with both the numbers? Because after all, it is the common factor between them. So it is 100% possible for me to multiply the HCF with both the numbers. Now, when I multiply the HCF with both the numbers, the condition is that the sum will be 430. All right, so this is the real maths, guys. Please understand this carefully. maths where you are converting the things written in words into numbers, that is equation. And if you learn this skill of converting the written part into number part, that is your equation, you have won 99% of the game already. Now, the rest of it is just your calculation. So let's get started with the calculation. I see 43 is the common part here. So I'll take 43 common. I'll be left with xy and I'll be left with 10 over here. Right? If I take this common out, 43 into 10. Now I know equals to ke agal bagal wale numbers cancel ho jayenge. So I'll be left with x plus y is equals to 10. Now, since they are asking me the distinct pairs such that they add up to a 10, you will say, ma'am, there are multiple opportunities here. I can have 1, 9, 2, 8 and so on. So what are the possibilities? 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, 4, 6, 5, 5. These are the possibilities, correct? Now that means if I multiply this number with 43 and this number with 43 and add it up, I'll get a 430, correct? But please remember that we have to take only those pairs which are co-prime. Why so? Because HCF bhi to match karna hai. HCF bhi to match karna hai. So we will only go for co-prime pairs. Co-prime pairs are those pairs whose HCF is 1. So 1 and 9 ka HCF 1 hai selected. 2 and 8 ka HCF 2 hai. 1 nahi hai. So they are not co-prime, not selected. 3 and 7 selected, 4 and 6 not selected because the HCF is 2 and 5 and 5 HCF is 5 so not selected. So there are only 2 pairs which will fulfill my condition. What are those pairs? If I put the value of X as 1 and Y as 9 then I will get this condition satisfied where the HCF will also be 43 and the sum will also be 430. Similarly, if I put the value of x as 3 and y as 7, again, this condition will be satisfied. So, you can check it after uh, the watching the video, guys, and you will find the solution correct. Let's move to the third one. This is a very interesting question, a lovely one, and log is tarah ke powers ke question dekhe question ko pehle hi chhodte the. So, I just want to tell you that the approach is really easy where you have to make options your friend. Try to make options your friends, guys. Whenever options are given, don't get confused by the options, rather make them your friend. So, starting first, the sum to n terms to the series, okay, the sum to n terms of the series is how much? That means you have to find the sum of the series. You'll be like, oh my god, who remembers all these formulas, ma'am? This is so pathetic. So, don't worry, there's no formula to remember, at least in this question. You have to apply your common sense. Now, what common sense will you apply? Solve the equation. Solve it. 1 square is actually equals to 1. 1 square plus 3 square is equals to 9 plus 1. That is 10. And this is equals to, let's say, 25 
plus 10 which is 35 and so on. Now why did I do this? I want to check the options. I want to check the options. So, चाहे आप option A से शुरू करो या उस option से शुरू करो जो आपको सही लग रहा है. Let's get started. Now, I know if I take two terms, that means when I take n is equals to 2, my expected sum should be 1 plus 10, 11. Right? Now, which formula gives me the value 11 when I take n is equals to 2 is my answer. So, just to save time of this video, I will directly jump to the right answer. That is option B. 1 by 6 into 2 into 2 plus 1 into 2n. n here is 2. So, 2 into 2 square plus 2 into 2 minus 1. So, if I solve this, I get 1 by 6 into 2 into 3. So, you know that 6, 2, 3 are all cancelled. And then this part is 4 into 2, 8 plus 4 minus 1. So, this would be equals to how much? 12 minus 1, 11. So, you are getting 11 when you are putting the value of n is equals to 2. And that is the place where it is 100% evident that your answer should be option B. Aap isko one term ke saath bhi try kar sakte ho. n is equals to 1 ke saath bhi try kar sakte ho where your expected answer should be 1 only. If this formula is working for n is equals to 1 and n is equals to 2, don't waste any more time and take it as your right answer. At least to come on this is the better, isn't it? Now, here comes the fourth question, guys. The sum of the first 2005 terms of this sequence, you have to tell me. Oh, God, you will say that, okay, fine, I can find out the sum of the sequence, but what to do when the sequence is getting repeated? This is pathetic again. No, not really. So, how to do this question? First, understand that 2005 terms ke aapko nikalna hai. And every four terms, after every four terms, the pattern is getting repeated. So, imagine dividing 2005 by 4. What will be the remainder in this case, guys? Of course, 2004 is divisible by 4. So, the remainder will be 1. Okay. And what will be the quotient if I divide this number? If I divide this number, the quotient will be 501. Now, why did I find out the quotient and the remainder? Because quotient ne kalne se mujhe ye pata chalega ki kitne bari ye 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 repeat ho hai. 501 times this series is getting repeated. The sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equals to 10. So that means I can say that 501 times into 10 is going to be the sum of this repeated pattern. But the interesting part of this question is that there is one remainder also. That means there will be an extra one. The first term will come again in the sequence when I am taking 2005 terms. So the first term is 1. So, add up this first term to your answer. So, if you calculate this, you will be getting 5010 plus 1, which is 5011. So, the answer of this question is option A. So, just see how I am breaking down the concept or breaking down the logic here. Aapko bhi bas is process ko adapt karna hai, theek hai? Just adapt the process. Now, let's go to the fifth question. Pause the video, try it on your own and then see the solution. So, in this video, in this question, again, you would say that, ma'am, here we are adding the factorials. But, remember that they are asking you the unit digit of the factorial. Okay, unit digit of the sum of this. Now, you would say that unit digit, oh, I know, the easiest trick in this life is zero. <laughs> but no, not really. Here, no option is zero. So, that is one good evidence of the fact that this will not work for you. Now, understand till when the factorials don't end up in a zero. I have learned it from school only and I remember this very well that 5 factorial is 120 and it is the first factorial which ends in a zero. Technically, 1 factorial is equals to 1, 2 factorial is equals to 1 into 2, 3 factorial is equals to 1 into 2 into 3, so it's also not ending in a uh, 0 and 4 factorial is equals to 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 which is 24, again not ending in a 10, okay 0. But then afterwards every factorial starting from 5 to any big number ends in a 0. So, how to find out the units digit in that case? Please understand that when you do 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, you get 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 24 and then onwards you start getting a 0 as your last digit. So, you can say it is always a multiple of 10. 
you can always say that it is a multiple of 10 now that means you know, when we move higher in the factorial table, like 5 factorial, 6 factorial, 99 factorial, all of them will have factors of 2 and 5 that will end in a 0. So that's why I wrote it like this. Now, when you add the last digits of this number, 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 4, you would realize you get a 13 and that is your last digit 3. And that means you don't have to worry about any factorial coming after 5 because that will ultimately end in a 0 only. When you add up those factorials, you will always have a 3 as the units digit in that place. Okay, You can try it out on your own also. That's an interesting assignment I give you after watching this video. Coming to the sixth question, guys, when 4 to the power 157 is m, is, is actually multiplied with 7 to the power 113, what is the digit in the last significant place? So, what is the meaning of last significant place? It is again unit digit only, okay? So, we have to find out the unit digit. Now, this involves the concept of cyclicity, which you have you know, uh, coaching maybe if you have the material very good if you don't have then go to telegram mega link okay and there get the material from there cyclicity okay cyclicity if you see uh, what we are doing here in cyclicity uh, we are going to check the powers of 4 so if you just check the powers of 4 4 to the power 1 is 4 4 to the power 2 is 16 ends in a 6 and then 4 to the power 3 again is 64 ends in a 4. So you will see there is a repeating pattern of 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6. That means in every odd power of 4, we will get the last digit as 4. And for every even power of 4, we will get the last digit as 6. As per this question, 4 to the power 157, 157 is odd. And therefore, the last digit would be what, guys? Last digit would be 4. All right. Coming to 7. 7 is really interesting here. So, I know 7 to the power 1 is 7. 7 to the power 2 is 49, ending in a 9. 7 to the power 3 is 3, 43, ending in a 3. And 7 to the power 4 is, uh, I believe, 2, 4, 0, 1. I don't remember actually, <laughs> but then I remember that it ends, ends in a uh, 1. So, I think I told the right one only, Benny, which ways you check, kar le, kar le na, ap check. 1.0. Now, that means after that, if you compare 7 to the power 5, you will again get a 7. Okay, so the cyclicity of 7 is 7931. Now, when it comes to this, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to divide the power of 113 by 4 because every 4 times it is getting repeated. And when you divide it, you get a remainder. What is that remainder is important for us? Remainder is 1. Okay, what is the quotient which you will be getting when you divide it? Quotient will be 16 and remainder will be 1. Now, remainder 1 means the first power of 7 ending in the last digit of 7. So, that means... The last digit in this case would be equals to 7. Now, what they are asking us is to multiply these last digits. So, when we are technically multiplying 7 with 4, we are ending up in a 8. 28 is the answer, but 8 is the last digit. And therefore, the answer of this question would be option C, 8. So, you see how you use the concept of cyclicity to get these answers. These questions would look a very big question to the ones who don't know the concept of cyclicity. But to the ones who have done their basics, aapke liye to bilkul choti si baat hai. Now, the last question for this video, guys, which will involve another formula which you should know, which will help you a lot for faster calculations. Imagine you know this formula. You can solve this question in a matter of 45 seconds and save that extra time to give in other questions. So, what is this question? How many zeros does the number 10 fac 100 factorial end in? So, what like zeros ending ka ek formula hai. Zeros ending ke formula ke hisaab se n divided by 5. This one is called as floor function. So, this bracket is called as floor function. Okay. So, there are two things I am going to tell you right now. n factorial ka bracket mein rakhoge divide karoge 5 se. And you will also add it up to 5 square. 
and you will also check it with 5 to the power 3 and so on depending upon aapka number kitna bada hai. So 5 to the power 3 I know is 125 and 125 is greater than 100. So therefore we will not take this condition right now for 100 factorial. Had I given you a number equals to 125 or greater than 125, you would have added the component of 5 uh, 5 cube also but since the number is smaller than 5 cube you don't need this component you only need the component or the powers of 5 which are less than 100 so in this case what we will do is we will take 100 divided by 5 and try to calculate the number which is you know the floor function yaha par floor function apply nahi hoga kyunki yaha hume exact quotient milne wala hai 20 and yaha hume exact quotient milega 4 ठीक है, so इसीलिए यहाँ पर floor function की कोई जरूरत नहीं है, 20 plus 4 technically we will end up with 24 zeros. But I want to give you another circumstance. What if, what if the number was not 100 factorial but 102 factorial? तो अगर आपको 102 factorial दिया जाता, तब आपको floor function का काम समझ में आता. That means here the quotient is going as 20 but the remainder is also coming something. So when I say the floor function, I am talking about the nearest smallest integer. Nearest smallest integer. So जब आप इसको divide करोगे, like for example, I will tell you the real numbers so that you get a 100% idea. So when you divide a 102 by 5 let's say. So if you are dividing 102 by 5 you will get 20.4 or 20.4 ka floor function ho jayega 20. Kyunki 20.4 ke liye ceiling function use karne par wo usko next biggest integer pe le jayega 21 aur floor function use karne pe wo usko nearest smallest integer pe le jayega that is 20. So here I will get again 20. Here again I will be getting a 102 divided by 25. So if you guys know that if you divide 102 by 25, you will land up upon a 4.08 or 4.08 ka floor function 4 ho jayega. So ultimately here also you will get the same answer. But if you get a number which is less than 25, okay, but if you get a number which is less than 25, let's say aapko koi question poochta hai ki mujhe 21 factorial mein kitne zeros end hota hai, wo batao. So in this case you are only going to take n by 5, you are not going to add up the n by 5 square wala formula. You are not going to add that because 5 square is greater than 21. So you will only calculate till here, you will divide 21 by 5, you will get a decimal value, isn't it? But then you will only take the floor function, you will get 4.2 but the floor function would be 4. So there will be 4 zeros coming at the end of 21 factorial. Chaho to khud multiply karke check kar lena. And with this, I taught you the concept of greatest smallest integer that is floor function i taught you the concept of uh, how to find out uh, the number of zeros which are ending in this series and so on ye na hi sirf aapko cat zat mein kaam karega but this will also eventually help you in your entire omits process also so if you found the video useful you know the drill guys please like the video share it with more and more people and if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button with the bell icon as well so that you get notified of all the new videos thank you for showing your consistency over these four episodes of Blitz Brigade and also joining the live session. If you have any queries and questions, please drop below in the comment section or DM me on Instagram. Do follow me on Instagram so that you get notified of all the important things. And if you need the free material, then join my Telegram group and get the details from the bio of the group. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care, stay strong and study hard guys.